Hi, it's Natalie here. I just wanted to do a little video today um, about the kinds of plans that I'm making as I go into 2019. And I'm really looking deeply into whether and how, um, including clients and reading for clients again, might look. So <clears throat> it's been a long time since I read for clients. So I realized like I'm not even sure like how people are, are reading how they do it now, what kind of prices do they charge. There were just so many questions that I had once I started to think in terms of like, yeah, and going out and looking, you know, looking to see what's what's out there. I was really shocked. <laughs> I had gone to one of my favorite um, local shops. I was really surprised at how few um, sets of like cards for professional readers were just there. I had gone in to buy a couple of decks of cards and the woman who was at the register asked if I was a reader and I'd said you know I just haven't done it for a long time and she'd said you know let me know if you decide to do it again and I think she kind of thought yeah you're the sort of person I'd want to sit with you know to, to have a reading and that is a big important you know that's a very big important aspect for me personally when I think about like who do I want to be read by as I saw like people on Etsy with lots of um offerings for for readings you know I guess through the mail or through email how do you know what kind of reader you're about to engage I guess and so that started me thinking like okay well then how do I want you know how do I want that to go because the idea of you know I have an Etsy shop I have an Etsy shop for fiber stuff right now and but I really kind of wanted to just ask deep questions about like how do I how do I see those readings going so I knew right off the bat for example after just listening to a few videos of of people giving advice about you know how to read for parties or how to read for uh, corporate events I really have no interest in processing that many nervous systems in that way in such a short period of time when it's students and it was in actors and people that I was used to working with day to day different discussion altogether but even then it's still a lot you know what what kind of you know experience do I want people to have um, if they come to read with me you know I want someone to walk away feeling empowered confident um, and I'd also like to create space for people that feels like they are supportive and that they are held in safety um, and that's important to me because you know, I, the kind of work I want to do with people, I would like to be deep work. There's only so much you can focus on the surface and say like, wow, you know, what about relationships? Why can't I find someone that I love without starting to really examine, okay, well, what's fueling that? You know, what's behind it? What kind of, um, what kind of things are under the surface? What is it that you're really trying to resolve? I like to go deep. Well, apparently in this world that is referred to as shadow work, <laughs> which I, which I like. Um, I looked at other, you know, at readers' sites because I wanted to see like, okay, how are they, you know, how are they marketing themselves and how are they putting themselves out there and so on. I thought, you know, I'm going to look at Ethany's site because she really. I know that she works at like cultivating other readers and so on. And I took a quiz. I ended up being the tarot shadow master. And I thought that was hysterical. This one is in my bed most nights. This guy is my daily, you know, friend that comes with me virtually everywhere. I love it so much. Anyway, I just thought that was so funny because if it comes down to it, I'm going to choose a dark stone. I'm sure that my choice of dark stone and looking in terms of like tarot archetypes and so on was part of what what fueled that. Um, the other one I like so much at the moment is is called Shungite. I don't know if this is... Let's see, there's a really pretty surface on this particular stone, but it came from um, this one area of Russia, I guess, where you know, or Russia or Finland where it actually grows. It's apparently supposed to be very transformative. I like dark stones. <laughs> if I'm going to sit and read for people, I need something that's grounding. To just kind of hold you in place. So yeah, uh, Shadow Master. Other questions that came up that were in there, you know, like how, 
how are you with people? And I know I, one of them was like, I answered that I'm an open book, which is true. I, I really don't feel like I have much to hide. That does upset some people. You know, I had a recent experience at a, um, at a job that was really unpleasant. Um, and in part, I think it was because the younger woman I was working with really did not did not appreciate that quality in me very much at all. I think it was very upsetting and, and very triggering for her. If you have a lot of your own work to do, um, hearing hearing someone speak their own truth um, and their own darkness from a place of, of acceptance and, um, and a certain, I guess, level of ease and, and so on is going to be a little upsetting. And I remember when I was in my twenties, it was not something I could be with either. So, um, another influence that I realized was going to come, come in and be a part of this was, uh, working with, um, a tarot documentary by a gentleman called Robert Bonomo. Um, and it's called the 21 faces of God. So he takes you through the entire major arcana from the perspective of archetypal symbolism. And it is something I will definitely be doing a video response to and definitely be doing a video review of. The, he talks about the journey of the fool. You can tell I'm in, like in teacher mode here. <laughs> My notebook, pen, I'm holding forth. It was, it was his, an interview that he did with um, one of my favorite podcasters, uh, Soraya Azkath. He does a podcast called Where Did the Road Go? And I'm a major fan. I'll put a link to it in the, in the link to this video. His interview with Robert Bonomo was really powerful and it was really very much what led me back into tarot because suddenly there was language for, or at least some language for the experience that I had had. So, um, big stuff. Uh, so I'm interested in looking at and examining the tarot from that more archetypal place, which means putting a bigger emphasis, I think, on, the, on that journey of the major arcana and then finding the way to integrate pip cards into uh, figuring out or better understanding where you, you know, what other things are influencing that position. Um, or that moment in that archetypal journey. No idea how that gets structured into like, hey, check out this particular package. This is what I'm going to do for you. But hopefully that'll become clearer, easier. I do definitely want to read, I think I said this, I want to read face to face, either, you know, in a coffee place. There's a lot of them where I live really close by that are beautiful and quiet and have like smaller spaces that you can go into and sit. So it'd be easy to meet a client there. I'd rather stay out of clients' homes and I'd rather not have clients in my home. But also uh, Skype. I think Skype is okay. Skype would be all right. I don't really want to read people over the phone particularly. It's not as fun for me. <laughs> Um, there's also the, you know, the human component. You, when I'm as a learner, um, I really prefer being in the company of a teacher and in the presence of a teacher wherever possible. Sometimes it's not possible. And I totally am also a person who is very capable of learning without the presence of a teacher without the company of a teacher. I think it could still come across well in writing because I do write. I'm a writer. And certainly I've had very powerful experiences, um, life-changing experiences through the writing of others. There's something that comes across in the presence, the face-to-face, eye-to-eye presence with another human being that can be really alchemical in terms of change and in terms of understanding and experience. I do seek that level of engagement with others when they're doing their own work. Certainly, I really would prefer that level of engagement with others as I do my own work. And it's rare. It's rare. I've rarely found people capable of holding enough space for the kind of, um, you know, ugliness, scariness, darkness that, that I can bring up and look at in myself. And it, it's not something that people tend to be very comfortable with. If I can't 
feel that someone is going to be safe in terms of their ability to hold space for me without being triggered or without being uh, led to a place where they need to become manipulative or uh, in some way use that, you know, view, view that experience, that, you know, temporary uh, experience or deep work as something uh, to be used in order to gain power, like it's a weakness. I'm not being very articulate about this, and it's because I'm trying to really trying to put the words to what I've experienced. Um, yeah, I don't. Uh, if I can, I have a pretty good sense at this point in my life that I'm either dealing with somebody who has that space or who definitely does not. And if somebody does not have that space, it's not someone I want to work with. So. Yeah, it is something that I value, and so it is something that I also feel is very precious and something that I'm happy to offer to other people as a result. So, yeah, it's worth taking the time to articulate and think through how I want to say that. Um, and, you know, obviously I'm not a completely, like, dark doom person. Um, you know what I mean? Like, I still like colors. Like, I'm somebody who laughs all the time. The world is inherently funny and absurd to me the majority of the time, and I'm someone who will laugh at a funeral and still uh, burst into tears 10 minutes later because it's so heartbreaking. That quality is definitely something I think that makes doing shadow work and difficult work um, a little more bearable. I find humor in, in really difficult situations, so hopefully that's something that would make it a little less painful for someone else to... Um, but yeah, yeah, rare to find. Um, so looking at how to, pardon me, looking at how to make that something that's more accessible to a client and, and like articulate and verbalize that is going to be a really interesting task. But yeah, I don't know. I'm interested in people's thoughts on this matter. Um, what kind of thoughts do people have? What experiences do you have as a reader? How do you work with your clients? How do you meet your clients? What are your favorite ways of working? If you have any any comments, any suggestions, those are things I'm very happy to hear. So um, definitely, definitely let me know. There are a lot of really profoundly experienced readers of all ages that are, you know, part of this online um, community. And yeah, I really value, value the different experiences. It's such a different such a different time period right now. When I read in the 90s and early 2000s, it, I really never put anything online. I, don't, I think it was really all just word of mouth and I had a card. Occasionally I would have to take my card and like mark out like the price that was there because <laughs> you'd put your price at the bottom of your business card and now, you know, there's, there's packages and it's a lot more expensive than I would have expected. So as I'm kind of curious about how to do this and how I want to do it and work with it, I'm also like trying to size up like what I can afford research wise in terms of going to see other readers to experience how they're working and how they read, you know, which I think is important. How is it as a client? As a teacher, I, I always found it really crucial to keep learning. So I would always be involved and I still always am involved in classes. How vulnerable do people feel and how are they making this accessible? How is it to be vulnerable? How is it to feel naked in front of um, someone who has more power in that relationship than you do? What does that bring up in me? Because obviously then those are the things that I need to work on in order to be a better teacher. Because if those are things that are right under the surface in me waiting to come up or come out, that's the potential I have to hurt or wound a student. So taking the time to really do that deep work on myself and see like what's lurking down there in the darkness. Where does this, the devil living in me right now in the form of insecurities, vulnerabilities, fears, unresolved uh, emotional pain or trauma. Let's bring it up to the surface. Let's bring it into the light. That's just always been my practice. So I think it's something that has to be done you know, as, as a reader too. So that's going to be part of the journey as well. 
and I'll have to maybe keep everybody updated about how that goes too. Along with this, I will also need to look at a website which obviously includes um, artwork, also some artwork teaching, work with mindfulness, a meditation group for artists locally, and then of course the doula work. So uh, as I work towards becoming um, an end of life or a death doula, how do I want to integrate that part of things into you know my overall plan as well? So it's just getting getting all the ducks in a row and visualizing it and, and making it a lot clearer. It's a lot big. It's big. It's a lot. But it's also, it also feels like something that's completely within reach and, you know, kind of maybe like where I've been headed all along. The universe has a way of just telling you. But it's a joy to share that journey um, and just put it out there. So thank you you've gotten this far and you've listened this far, thank you. All right, until next time.